Joining me now, Marsha Fudge, the 18th Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. Secretary Fudge, welcome. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be with you. So HUD's 2023 annual homeless assessment report found that on a single night in January, more than 650,000 people were experiencing homelessness nationwide. That's a 12 percent increase from 2022. What explains such a big jump? Jonathan, there are a number of reasons, but the primary reason is that rents continue to increase, supply continues to decrease. And when you have people who have nowhere to go, and even those who do can't afford to go anywhere, you end up in what I'm looking at as a perfect storm. Jonathan, part of the problem that we have faced as a nation, especially as it relates to homelessness, is that when you look over the last 50 years, the percentage of poor people in this country has pretty much re remained the same. Hmm. But as the numbers, raw numbers continue to grow, we don't grow with them. We don't treat housing like we treat food insecurity or Medicare or Social Security, which are all entitlement programs. We look at it from a discretionary point of view as it relates to our budget. So it depends on the whims of the people making decisions whether they put resources toward it. So we are now in a place following COVID where there are fewer places for people to go that they can afford to go, even though we have increased the number of vouchers by more than 100,000. We have put billions of dollars into creating an environment in which people can build new, low, and moderate income housing. We are working with communities across the country. And, and to be perfectly honest, we are actually providing more mortgages than we have in many, many years. But the problem is so big, Jonathan. It mm. takes a strategic approach from the entire all of government. So to, to follow up, Secretary, then what resources are available now to address this surge? Well, to the president's credit, he has put resources into each of the last two budgets to try to increase the uh, spending. If you go back as far, Jonathan, as the rescue plan, there was $10 billion set aside just to address the problem of homelessness. Just this year, HUD has given out almost $600 million to communities across the country to address it. And in particular, we have tried to say that unsheltered homelessness and homelessness that is rural is something that we've not taken into account in the way we should, so we're putting more resources to it. We are connecting people. We have connected more than 400,000 people to help, whether it be to their social services people, whether it be to HHS, to VA, we are doing our part. But the problem is so big, John, mm -hmm. that until this nation decides it is going to address this in a strategic way, it is not going to change anytime soon. Um, well, well, one of the one of the bright spots um, uh, at HUD is the Federal Housing Administration's first time home buyer rate. That's at its highest in more than two decades, supporting nearly 1.5 million first-time home buyers over, over these three years. Um, how have you worked to expand home ownership during a time when many don't see home ownership as a reality, and especially when there are high interest rates? The reality is that we have provided uh, support for more than 600,000 first time home buyers in an economy that everybody thought it couldn't happen. Some of the things that we've done, Jonathan, is we've made it easier to purchase a home. So we have decided that student loan debt has been a problem for people of color in particular and lower income people. So we have in our underwriting now recalculated the way that we look at it so that it is mm -hmm. not uh, the kind of negative that it has been in the past. We as well have made sure that people who generally would present to us and we'd say they had no credit, now we're using positive rental history. So if you've paid your rent on time for a year, we consider that you are credit worthy. We have reduced the mortgage insurance payment so that, uh, so that people who now can get into a house and just need that little extra, Jonathan, maybe it is replacing a refrigerator. Maybe it is reducing the cost of rent that month. Maybe it's some other water heater or something. We are now providing the resources such that they can do those things. So it makes it easier in the long run. And we've said we as well are looking at how in the past we have had to fight with the remnants 
the legacy of, of race in this country. So we are also looking at it from a fair housing perspective. And I think all of those things together have made it a lot easier for people to see that it is possible to own a home in this country, mm -hmm. even today. And Secretary Fudge, real, real quickly, because we're out of time, we're heading into 2024. What's your message to Americans who might be feeling pessimistic due to housing shortages, uh, um, raises in, in, in rents, and the increase in homelessness? I would say to them to not only contact HUD, but we have housing counselors all across the country. We are making it such that people who have criminal histories are going to be looked at differently in our process. I would say to them that there is hope, that we have an administration that really does care about what is going on in this country. We are addressing homelessness. We are addressing housing in a way that has not been done in decades. It's not going to happen overnight, Jonathan, but it is going to happen. And so I would say don't lose hope because we are doing everything we possibly can to make the dream of home ownership a reality for everybody in this country. Well, your optimism is giving me optimism. Secretary of yes. Housing, uh, Housing and Urban Development, Marsha Fudge. Secretary Fudge, thank you very much for coming to the program. Thank you for having me. Merry Christmas.